Hello, denizens. Welcome to my show. So, uh, I put my former network executive butt on the line. A very nice butt, according to my wife, actually. After watching the pilot episode of Netflix's That 90s Show and boldly declared that I would have greenlit the show based on just that one episode. Uh, uh, greenlit for any of you not into Hollywood parlance means a movie or TV show has been approved for production. Go forth and multiply. Conversely, the words you don't want to hear is your project is going into turnaround. Now that I have watched the rest of the 10 episodes, do I think I made a mistake or do I still think I was right? More importantly, what did you think? I have to admit that after watching the start of the second episode, I, I did get the heebie-jeebies. But with the introduction of their trailer trash neighbor, Sherry, mother of Gwen, I knew the creators and writers would not let this show go down without a fight. Sherry was out of the same mold as Kitty and Red, an exaggerated adult character with clear wants and needs who was easy to write exceedingly cheap jokes for, my, my favorite. And we got an incredibly funny Fez who was channeling Don't Mess With The Zohan to great comedic effect. The kids were still not fully gelling, but the oldsters were doing enough of the heavy laugh lifting I didn't mind. Callie Haverdas, Leah, uh, was coming in a Leah. <laughs> I can never get that right. Into her own. I still can't figure out what Ashley Auf der Heide's uh, Gwen is about. Not Ashley's fault. Uh, that's a writing issue. Perhaps I was expecting a bit more moody goth. Uh, Rain Doy's Ozzy is good for cheap gay sarcasm. Sam Morello says Nikki uh, is still a bit of a cipher. Maxwell Donovan as Nate uh, was maybe my biggest surprise. He is going to be a star. He does many subtle things that I don't think most people will pick up on, but uh, he, he, he's a clever actor and made every scene he was in work. Mace Cornell was perfect as Jay Kelso. Now, the birthday episode with the 90210 flashbacks, <laughs> maybe the most uh, consistently funny. Sure, there were stumbles throughout the series and some cringy moments, but there were also big laughs, which She-Hulk <laughs> couldn't pay for. One thing I thought they did very well, which I haven't really seen done before, was mixing in OG cast members into the show in more than just in a cheap cameo way. Fez, I've, I've mentioned. There was also a nice turn by Don Stark returning as Bob. It all felt very natural, not too stunty. There were also moments of genuine warmth and, uh, you know, which every sitcom has to have. The final show had a surprise cliffhanger that I didn't expect that came organically out of the new core cast and not some external insert. I was really impressed with that. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this resolves in season two, which, as of this writing, uh, we've not heard whether it's been picked up by Netflix or not. However, it was number one on Netflix's most watched shows the weekend following its debut. And, and I'm, you know, peeking at the Netflix app. Uh, it, it's still number one, at least in Canada here. Do I have any complaints? Sure. Lots. But they are irrelevant if the flight crew got the plane in the air. I'm not going to rush the cockpit and tell the pilot how to fly the damn thing. At this point, as a network executive, I just have to take my seat and drink one of my complimentary beers. <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm joking. There won't be a show that doesn't go by that won't get mandatory network notes. It, the favorite of all producers. We do have to justify our parking spot somehow. That being said, the major complaint most people I've talked with have is that the show does not feel very 90s. I would agree, but it wouldn't have taken much. I have no idea about fashion, so I can't comment on that. But the fact that no one had a Nintendo Game Boy, that was inexcusable. In the show, Kitty is the one with the computer, but I think it should have been red 
you know, Leia could be giving computer support to Red. I mean, that's 100% 90s. And just based on my stories, helping my dad and my father-in-law, I could have filled all the episodes with, with just that. My point is that the producers did not require much to add a bit of 90s zeitgeist. I could tell that they were avoiding nerd culture so it wouldn't turn into the Big Bang Theory. Would I green light a season two? This one's easy. If the ratings are good, yes. If the ratings suck, no. It's times like these, it's easy to be a network executive. Till next time, denizens, be seeing you.